go get him again. What's going on, Fragrance family? Welcome to another Sampling Samples Sunday. Every Sunday, we're sampling. This series is where I wear a scent as much as the little sample lets me. It is my scent of the day today. And I'm going to give you as much detail as I can, give you my final thoughts on if I'll be buying this fragrance, getting another sample, or simply this is the end of the road for this fragrance. Today's sample is a special one because it is a new brand to me, a new fragrance, of course, and it is my by the brand of Bogue Perfumo. Being in the fragrance community, you see new brands all the time, new fragrances being hyped or, you know, there's certain noses that I love to follow within the fragrance community, not just on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Base Notes, Fragrantica, all that. Um, as a fragrance head, I love to learn and continue to learn. Now, this is one of those brands that um, I think my interest started peaking on Facebook. A lot of people were talking about this particular release. Um, and it's, again, me with keywords. This one intrigued me because I was looking for animalic scents. And this one kind of popped up. After doing my due diligence, I felt that this one was sample worthy. And... Um, yeah, I was right, by the way. <laughs> it's it's a good one. Um, so let's go under the hood. Let's take a look at some stats on this one before we start sniffing it. Our release date was back in 2014, so it's been a while since this thing has been released and I didn't even know about it. Concentration de Parfum. And the nose behind this is Antonio Gardoni. Uh, a great nose, of course, uh, the nose uh, for one of those zoologist uh, fragrances, and I, that's where I was introduced to Antonio's work. Major notes to my nose. Um, again, I try to pinpoint three notes that really put an impact on me on this on this particular fragrance. That could change once I get to the full-fledged review, but uh, tuberose, oak moss, and civet were the three-headed monster here in this release. So let's get to it. Time to drain off my little sample. There's only a little bit left to remind me of this introduction. And of course, I'm wearing it today on my skin. Let's delve into my from Bogue Profumo. Oh, and uh, oh. where do I start? My starts off big, bold, and it brings me back to the yesteryear, the floral ships uh, with a big animalic bark. Um, this fragrance, when I, when I first apply this fragrance, this smells so much older than, of course, the date that it was released. And I have to say that's a compliment to the nose. Um, not a new idea. Again, that's one thing that I want to uh, say here. It's not a new idea, but it's an old idea that is kind of hard to do these days. And I think um, we have to applaud the nose that they made something so good um, with this idea, um, with all the restrictions out there. So, and this fragrance really engulfs me. Like even putting this little dab dab here, um, I'm getting a lot of it. Um, this transports me in the time where perfumery had no barriers, where you can go big, bold, daring, and just do as you wish as a perfumier. Uh, no joke, from first sniff, this fragrance was purchase worthy for me. And this is one of those that I was just like, yep, done, sold. Um, it didn't need time, it didn't need any more wearings, and that's where these little Lucky Scent samples are little golden nuggets. And I know a lot of people hate on them, including me, like no atomizer, come on now. But it does give me a good general idea. I don't have to poo poo on it. it they do have a large library and you know I'm not sponsored by Lucky Scent, but I feel like this is a great way of, okay, I already know that I want this um, because I didn't need any more wearings. It's purchase worthy. And Gardoni was on my radar already as a nose with his work with Zoologist, but even more so now. Uh, with his brand of Bogue, um, now is definitely on my radar and high on my radar. I, I, I really like this nose's work and uh, this one um, is really just sealing the deal for me. So let me tell you what I smell here because all I'm doing is blabbing. So what do I smell here? You have some bold anabolics, old school sheep uh, tendencies and some amazing florals. This whole concept up top comes off musky, camphorous, skanky even. The idea I get immediately with this, it takes me to a cold, wet, dry, 
at the same time, mossy laden cave. That's where I'm going here. The animalics here remind me that there were animals here, perhaps bats. The walls, they're, they're highly mossy. There's mineral quality here and there's some florals living in this cage, funny enough. This imagery is exactly what a fraghead like me craves. Um, the, the colors I get here are deep, intense olive green, brown nuances. Um, really fantastic, fantastic release that brings you back. Now the opening of my has animalics and mossy green aspects that blanket over this floral core that will be met in the heart. So let's hit up the animalics here first. I get civet, which shows its dirty side. There's apparently a few animalics in here that include, uh, of course, the civet, but also castorium, among others. But the overflow of animalics does not resonate in the scent as it's just enough for my nose to give it some bite. So it's not just animalic overload. I mean, it really is well done, well blended and the civet is the key one for me. The mossy greenness in this opening is absolutely beautiful and seems to me as the base of this whole journey of this release. I love how the animalics work with the moss. Uh, there's a champagne bubbly aldehydic tone that dances throughout and gives the user some brightness in this top and we will start giving up a soapy quality more into the heart. The green tuberose is a huge pillar in this opening with inholic jasmine, rose. This is where this scent takes me to the late 70s, early 80s, with kind of like a leather, rose, aldehydic green scent. The white florals truly show me personality here and are simply outstanding in this release. The opening is big, bold, will remind noses of an earlier time in perfumery, Simply magical in this opening. I mean, it gives me so much. There's so much to discover in this release. I'm, I'm sure I just hit the, the tip of the iceberg here. I, I can't wait to delve more into this release, but that's what I get in the, in the forefront of this release. Just absolutely stunning. Now into the dry down, my starts adding a balsamic resinous quality, which gives the scent another layer. It's a bit of smoke here, but it's a whisper. Almost like incense was purposely toned down in this release. The sweetness is honeyed. So there is some sweetness in here, but it's honeyed. Not a synthetic vanillic tone running throughout, but a beautiful syrupy honeyed release. And it goes well with this imagery of those florals from the early 80s, late 70s type of release. Now in the deeper dry down, you start losing some of the interesting or bold animalics here and the florals finally have their time to shine. The green mossy quality continues to push here with the resins adding themselves to the overall scent. The scent continues to have excellent overall depth. Um, it really has that density that I love in these type of fragrances. I felt from time to time while wearing this one that there was a leathery tone some musks here. Uh, the scent really warms up here in the dry down, smooths out after the animalics had their spotlight. Um, at the end of the day, overall, my took me for a ride. And I know deep down the sample didn't cover all the bases. And my fragrance review, I do apologize. I did not cover all the bases on this release. I tried my best and hopefully it's enough, but it's simply outstanding as a scent from top to bottom. Um, I absolutely love this ride uh, that Bogue took me onto, and I can't wait to delve more into this line. Now let's get into seasons, day, night, versatility, and performance. Seasons, fall and winter, again, you don't have to be limited to those. Those are just suggestions. Day or night, I feel like this is more of a nighttime scent. Versatility, below average. I feel like this is more of a mood type scent. And again, it doesn't matter of the season. Um, right now, today, it is, overcast, um, there was some rain. Um, it, this fragrance, this is the first time actually wearing it with that type of weather. I went outside and this thing just shined. Um, I, you know, the spring, fall just resonates with this release, I think. Performance, longevity, 10 plus hours. Um, I had no issues with longevity. Projection, again, no issues, high as projection. I don't think it's beast, uh, but it's very, very close to that section of beast mode. So now on to my overall thoughts and um, dare I say one of the better modern day sheeps 
Um, it's definitely not for everyone. So please sample prior to buying as you may not have the same taste as me. The blends, outstanding. Uh, to my nose. The artistic side of this one really blew me away. It's nothing new in the perfume world, like I said, but it's something old that was made new. It froze a piece of time for all perfume heads that keep searching for vintage eBay purchases. This kind of froze that element of time. It's right there for us in a modern release. And for that, the nose has to be applauded. Um, the people that own this love this fragrance. Me and you, we talk the same language. How Gardoni did this with so many restrictions in, in place is simply genius. The scent was made with love, time. Um, you know, just I wish I was there just to see the process of from from the first start of this release until it was actually released to the public. I applaud them for this release. This is a great release from a brand that I didn't know of. Shame on me, <laughs> I'm late. But at the same time, this is what, um, all our journeys are different, made different. And uh, I'm just happy that this was a little piece of my journey now in 2023. Better late than never, right? So at the end of the day, as far as samples go, I'm getting, you know, bottle worthy 100%. So that there's no issue there saying, you know, I'm, I'm done with this one, but I want to give this one a score. I was blew away. If I have to give it a score currently, I have to give it a 10 out of 10. I have to. Um, this thing transported me into places. A lot of fragrances are nice to smell, but this is one of those that brings me back in time. It really, and I was just sitting there trying to dissect this thing and go, how do you do this? How, how did that, this happen? Where's this going? How is this gonna go into the dry down? And those were things that I was just trying to calculate in my head while I was just writing my review. Um, at the end of the day, I was kind of like, you know, I was reviewing it and really enjoying myself, but not really just sitting back and actually enjoying the scent. Um, that's where I want to be. And that's why this is 100% bottle worthy. 10 out of 10 from me. Now that you heard my take, I'd love to see yours in the comments below. Um, if you've never heard of this brand or Mr. Gardoni, please do um, a, a great, uh, an artistic uh, perfumier. I can't wait to see more of his stuff. As always, a greater port fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your set wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube.